Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, hope everybody's having a good Mother's Day weekend. We are here on the farm here in central Kentucky and um, apologize right up front for the allergies. Uh, it's been uh, kind of rough here the last couple of days. There's got to be uh, something floating around the air all the time this time of the year, right? Uh, guys, what we're going to talk about today is, is a, a video that's pretty popular. Actually, my most viewed um, topic or most viewed viewed video of the year we're going to talk about rye and the importance of rye the importance of rye and uh why rye for whitetails and uh i think it's i think it's so overlooked right there's so many things guys we could make five videos on why rye is so important and what we use it for um but the most important there's there's a couple of important topics that we're going to cover today so one right off the bat right let's talk about rye cereal rye not rye grass uh i think you know as the channel grows and and the more people that we reach out to and and industry as a whole i think the uh, rye grass versus cereal rye thing is um becoming you know more um common and, and folks are understanding it more but it's still surprising how many clients I go to every each and every year? Um, I think I think a lot of the rye grass goes back to in the south um, for a lot of turkey um, creations and and uh, you know turkey plots and brood plots and stuff like that. That years ago um, rye grass was what we were taught to use, and that's it couldn't be further from the truth, right? Rye grass is not what you want to plant, right? So when we talk about rye, we don't uh, we don't mean uh, rye grass. We mean cereal rye. So first and foremost, that. Second thing, um, I'm always asked, you know, what time of the year do we use rye and why, right? Um, so here's what we're going to talk about today, guys. Um, there's there's many different applications for it. So let's just start at the top, right? One of the things that I use rye for is a cover crop. So I use rye uh, for a cover crop in my shop plots um, to take the heat off from or take the pressure off from my clover and chicory. So what I do is I plant those uh, clover and chicory plots, um, you know, maybe frost seed them, get them going, and then frost seed them in the spring of the year, early spring of the year, run those through like a maybe mow it once. I like to mow less now um and then use clethodim to, to spray the grasses out of that shot plot for the summer months right as we creep up into fall i actually put cereal rye into my shop plots one as an attraction two as a nurse crop so they kind of leave the clover alone so the, the clover will um and the chicory will be you know left further into the fall so I run with that rye, clover, chicory all through the fall. And then in the spring of the year again, I spray that clethodim back on that to spray the rye or to uh, take the rye back out. So putting the rye in, taking the rye back out. Um, you can do that same thing with mowing, but you're not actually killing the rye, right? You're just setting it back. So it will continue. But I like to, uh, I like to spray the clethodim in the spring, like I said, guys, and set the rye back out of there and then plant it fresh back in there every year. So that's one of the things we use rye for. Other thing that we use rye for, guys, is the very important piece of the puzzle when it comes to our food plotting strategies with a kind of a regenerative ag, um, no-till approach that we do um, because there's so many things that that rye does for us, right? So. Is it kind of goofy that maybe I'm talking about planting rye right now um, in mid-May? Maybe to some, but to me it's not. And the reason for that, guys, is this. Um, I want to show you right now why that rye that we planted last fall is so important right now. So my fall blend, or our, our fall blend that I have with uh, John Comp, so it would be our whitetail driven fall either north or south, depending on where you're at in the country, our fall blends are heavy in rye, cereal rye, right? And the reason for that is, is it's an attractant in the fall. Um, but more so, what that does, guys, is it's the first thing that is going to green up in the spring. Makes great turkey, 
turkey plots because your your rye you can't physically get out in a lot of parts of the country 85 90 percent of the country you can't plant soon enough in the spring to have that germinate and to give you that viable plot that it would um, or that it can and it does from a fall planted rye crop so the, the rye that you're planting in the fall with our fall blends that's with your with your brassica blends let's say your heavier bulkier uh, blends in the fall that is so strong in rye for that attractant and also like I said to get make sure we get that rye there first thing in the spring why is that so important right one it's a great fall food source it helps the, the, the deer in general, but your bucks rebounding from that, you know, 30% body weight loss that they go through after fall um, into that, you know, um, January, February time period. They're still eating that rye and, and able to, that rye is still viable. Also, what it does, guys, is like I said, it's the first thing to, to green up in the spring. What we want right now, and we planted a little bit early this year because of the weather that we're having in Kentucky and also my schedule. But right now, guys, I'm gonna show you this here for example, is this rye right here mixed in with this crimson clover. Uh, and we've got a whole bunch of clover in here, hairy vetch. Um, all of our, our blend from last fall is what you see growing right now. I have seeded our summer blend right into this, broadcast it right in, and I crimped down this rye. So this rye, a little bit early, like I said, right? But my crimper is very aggressive. So I'm able to, I'm able to crimp a little bit sooner. But the, what, the perfect thing that you want to do this time of the year, if your time allows it, is ahead of rain, right about the same time that this rye is going into what we refer to as the dough stage. That dough stage is when you can take the, the rye, the head of the rye, and you can peel the, the top seed bank apart here, if you will. And you take that and you actually squeeze this. You get one of these seeds to come out of the pods and you squeeze it. So you can see right now we're early because there's no moisture in that seed pod. If you press this and it doesn't kind of leave a, a, a residue, an, a uh, watery residue, that means it's not in the dough stage, right? So the perfect thing to do is to wait until this is about at the dough stage or just before the dough stage, perfect world, right? If you can afford it um, and you have a, uh, the ground that's, you know, able to do that, um, is to drill in to this rye, this standing crop from last fall. So you've got all this clover, all your oats, all your wheat, your rye, everything is standing up. You drill into this and then we crimp this down. So what we're doing, guys, as you can tell, this one's broke here, and then it's uh, a little scarred here. It's, it's short, so some of this stood back up, some of it did not. A lot of it's laying down. We run the crimper over this, guys, is to terminate this, to lay down on that summer blend that I broadcast into this, and I run my crimper, which is a very aggressive crimper, but at certain speed, and it acts, as this lays down, it acts as a cultipacker as well. So the seeds in the ground, on the ground, we press it down to get that good seed to soil contact. We terminate the rye with the crimper. So what this does is instead of this um, majority of it standing back up, if it's at the dough stage, it's very brittle at the stalk too, right? So plant, then crimp. And if this starts to want to stand back up, which a lot of times if you catch it right, it won't, then you can spray a light application of clothidim on that as a grass killer to just set this, make sure that it stays down, right? I wouldn't use the, um, I wouldn't use Roundup or, you know, glyphosate unless you have a, um, if you're using our program anyway, if, unless you have a bad weed problem. Um, the glyphosate sets everything back. The goal is not to not to clean the slate, right, and, and, and take all of all of your food off from here. So you lose all your food except for the stuff that you planted. You're actually just laying this down with the crimper, using the the, the clethodim if you have to. This year I didn't have to. I don't have a weed problem at all. Um, maybe I've got a couple broadleaf, um, you know, weeds that we could take out, something like that. But in all in all, it's 
they're, they're pretty good, right? Um, so lay this down. Guys, this above ground is working for you, but also it's working for you just as much, if not more, below ground. And what I mean by that is the more that this rootstock gets viable, and I'll see if I can get some to come out here. So you get this good rootstock forming, right? So yes, we've got some wild onion in here, which isn't hurting anything. Deer like it actually, but this, this rye, this stuff here, guys, is what we're looking for. And like I said, I'm just sitting in one of the spots where um, it's actually pretty dense right here, um, compacted right here on the road. Go over there about 20 feet. It'd probably be a little bit uh, less compacted. And I could, when I pull that out, you know, it'd be a, a bigger ball of root, root base and, and material. But as you can see, guys, all this good soil smells really good. It's it's a worm base, right? And as this goes in the ground, and as this starts really, really putting a lot of soil health, if you will, you can see that there's not a lot of weed stock in here. So rye is not only a food source, it's not only good for crimping on top of the soil for what I refer to as your plot armor, right? Laying it on the top of the soil so your, your plots don't dry out, your seed doesn't dry out. When everybody else is drying out, when the rains don't come as much as we want them to, all of a sudden our plots are okay until we're able to get to that next rain because this is on there no different than putting a uh, straw blanket or something like that on your yard. This lays down and becomes a plot armor. So it's doing good things for you in the dirt. It's doing good things for you. It's it's above ground. Weed suppress it below the ground. Weed suppress it above the ground. And what and the reason for that is, guys, the better root stocks you can get and the healthier soil, less weeds. And on the top, what what happens is, this becomes a what I use is kind of a I always tell folks is I set this down for a second as I always tell folks is the better the best rye year that you have going into the spring. Let's say the best that will be the best year that you have for your um, for your food plots, whether that's fall or summer. And the reason for that is, guys, is if you, if you have really good rye stock, the better that you can get your rye, what happens is when this lays down, it becomes this effect. And as this uh, lays down, guys, it's not just a bunch of weeds. That's kind of a broadleaf mat, if you will, right? It's a more stemmy approach. And by doing this, you get this, you get this, um, this look on the ground and it's very porous, right? So what happens is the seeds are able to grow up through it, but it creates enough of a layer, if you will, a thatch layer that a lot of your weed seeds go to penetrate up through that thatch layer and they can't, they don't have enough onboard energy and they die before they, you know, get that photosynthesis to really get a lot of sun sets the weeds back and that's so that's what helps with that weed suppressant right so below the ground and above the ground so i hope that makes sense to you guys why why we use rye for that application so your goal is to going into fall if i could recommend anything about rye one thing to help everybody out i'm always asked this and what i would recommend guys is this when you plant your fall food plots about August, depending on where you're at in the country, right? August through October, if you're further south. You give that about 30 days. You wanna be really, really crucial of yourself going into that next phase of the fall with your food plots. When you, when you, what you need to be honest with yourself is, are your food plots struggling? And if they are, you want to dose them with a 150 to 200 pounds per acre of cereal rye, whether you drill it or broadcast it. And the reason for that is, is you can salvage the fall because of the attractant value. It's a great attractant, right? Not only can you use it for the fall, it'll be there in the spring to start this process. So you can have something to crimp, call the pack and or crimp down over top of your summer blends that you're going to put in the ground, right? So it actually starts the fall before. If I were sitting here right now and telling you, hey, plant rye now because it's going to save the day today it's not you need to be able to plant that ahead of the time in the fall but our summer blends for example have rye in it as well not near as much but has rye in it and that's why because we're setting the stage we're creating more 
um, you know, um, weed suppressant. And then we're topping it off again in the fall and we're coming back at it again in the summer. And it never, rye never leaves our um, regiment, I guess you could say, right? So now that's why we use it and that's what it does for us. Now, there will, there will be a lot of folks that tell you, you don't want the summer food. And so you don't need the rye because rye doesn't crimp as good and you want to put a straight buckwheat or something like that. Well, here's the, here's the problem, guys. The reason I went to rye years ago instead of buckwheat is, is this. A lot of folks recommend and they will plant buck, straight buckwheat, monoculture buckwheat. Buckwheat's great if ev all the stars align. And if your deer numbers are right and you don't go through a drought... And here's why. If if you go through a drought year, you plant buckwheat in April or May. It goes through, uh, we go through a drought like we have the last couple of years. Buckwheat, the reason it crimps so well over your fall food plots, guys, your seeds, is because, and it rots, is because it's high in moisture. Well, here's what happened to me and a lot of people around the country. Go through a drought year, that buckwheat's high in moisture. They can't get water anywhere else. The deer start coming out here and devour your buckwheat. Your buckwheat's gone. Come fall, you have nothing to crimp down over your fall your fall seeds anyway because it's gone. That's what I ran into a lot. So whether that's a region thing or not, I've, I've seen it work. It does work. But more so than not, it doesn't. The other thing is it has no food, not no, but it has not a lot of summer food value for the deer and it's not doing the, the greatest things for the soil that you think it is. A blend, guys, with the clovers, the vetch, the rye, uh, the, the beans, everything that we have in our summer blends is working for us in building great uh, soil, mending our soil so our fall plots have the best chance that they can possibly have. I don't feel that you could do that with straight buckwheat, right? So, so keep that in mind. That's why we switched and I went to a blend Yes, it's summer food, but more so than summer food, I think on the land steward side of it, guys, the older I get anyway, the more I start putting more attention. It's no different than cutting in a bedding area and putting brows, right? The more I start focusing on their food, 365 days a year. I understand that, guys, if you don't have time or, and or the budget to plan a, a summer plot, I, I get that. Um, it's a lot more work, but it's a lot more payoff because healthier deer, better soil, so you have a better chance of that fall food plot growing and better soil for the fall. You got better better turnout of that um, of that brassica blends that you're putting in. And to me, it starts by amending the soil at some point, right? So that's one of the reasons why we use rye. That's why I'm so adamant that you get it in your fall blends. Uh, cereal rye, not rye grass, right? Get it in your fall blends so you have it to work with you for you in the spring. So in the spring, you're going to spray it out of your shot plots. You're going to put it back in to your regular plots, your food plots. That's going to run all summer long like it is right behind us right now. Excuse me, guys. That's going to run all summer like this. The beans, the sorghum, uh, it's a real jagged plot, real thick, lush clovers, beans, sorghum. Everything's working for us. So here's the end goal. The goal, guys, is to drill into this, drill your fall blends, when this is all sorghum, and we'll show you as we go, sorghums, it'll be this tall, uh, beans, um, a smorgasbord, if you will, a buffet, right? You just drill into that, plant your seeds, or broadcast into that right ahead of a heavy rain. If you're broadcasting, guys, always plant about 20% more than you would if you're going to drill, and you have to time that broadcasting before a real good rain not just a potential rain a light potential rain a real good rain so soil's always covered it's never it never goes back to open dirt again maybe if the thatch layer gets too thick because we have a dry year and it doesn't go dry moisture dry moisture is what starts that breaking down of the thatch and creates that green manure putting all that vegetation all of that dead compost if you will back in the soil uh, maybe there's something to be said for maybe every third year when you do your summer planting, maybe run a light disc, a light disc over the top of it. So let's break down the planting instruction. Sometimes that gets a little, do we do this, do we uh, not do this going into uh, 
spring or uh, spring versus fall planting. So in the spring, guys, I what I do is I plant, I broadcast. Drilling is better. Plant into this standing crop, right? Broadcast into it. Then we crimp. So we're taking this rye and we're crimping it down on top of the summer blend. So planting, then crimping. That runs, that summer blend, which by the way, does have buckwheat in it, but it's not the only thing in it, right? So it's a blend of clovers, beans, sorghums, um, everything, right? 12 different, excuse me, 12 different seeds, I believe is in that. We let that run all, all uh, summer until about August here I plan about the middle of August so middle of August ahead of some good weather good rains coming I seed my fall blends we use the south blend south spring and and fall or summer and fall I, I broadcast that fall blend right into that um, that blend that summer blend that's been growing all summer I do not crimp so the goal is is to only crimp in the spring don't crimp in the fall after your fall planting right why is that so why do we not crimp in august when i plant the reason is if you crimp guys the crimper is a meant for it to be a terminator it's termination you're terminating the rye any weeds or anything like that but better rye crop we have the better right um we're, we're terminating it what you don't want to do is you don't want to terminate all of your summer blend because you can use it as a buffet going into fall. It's got everything in it. So now you've got the rye and you're adding more rye. You've got the clover, you've got the buckwheat, you've got um, the sorghums, you've got more clovers, you've got all this stuff in there and you're adding the brassicas into that, the tubers, the bulbs. Um, you're adding all that in there. If you crimp in the fall, what you're doing is you're going to terminate some of that especially like your sorghums and stuff you're going to terminate all that yes you're not gonna disc or anything so you're not you know taking everything away the goal is is to not crimp though in the in the uh, after your fall planting can you cold pack it yeah that'd be something to do right run a cold packer over it just to set that seed seed to soil contact um so this question is a lot of folks think that you you put that seed into there, you're not, your, your fall seed into it, you're not going to get one soil, um, seed to soil co connection, and you're not going to get enough daylight, and that's not the truth. So, if it's a good growing season, what you'll find, guys, is when you go through and plant that, I use a broadcaster on the back of my ATV, I go through that, and I broadcast that in, right, that fall blend into that standing summer crop, I knock just enough of it down with the tires of the Ranger, uh, back and forth seeding that. I break enough of it down that it perforates the canopy, that it lets the sunlight in, and I don't have any problems. Now, if you drill it, it's better because you're not really crimping it. You're, you're, the cultures and stuff are just cutting a hole. You're putting that good seed to soil contact and you're knocking probably 50% of it down. You're letting a whole lot of sunlight in that way. and. Um, like I said, that's the best way to do it. You can do it. I'm doing it broadcast. I have a tool that I'm making that I've talked about several times. That's going to be kind of the in-between between, between um, broadcasting and drilling um, to try to get more budget-friendly, right? So irritating the soil just a little bit, getting a little bit better seed-to-soil contact, and knocking some of that stuff down to promote whatever we can to help that, that growth of that fall blend. So... So remember guys, only crimp after your summer planting, not crimping after your, you're putting in your fall blends, let's say August to October, you're not crimping then. The only time that I would recommend to crimp in the fall, right guys, to cover that, if you, if you find that your deer numbers are high and they do eat you out of house and home, which as a blend, as you can see, all this food, I've never had that happen to me, or I can't say that's happened to my clients. Yeah, all over the country, Alabama included. Um, but if they do eat you out of house and home, and you think that you don't have a lot of 
thatch on the ground to protect your seed for the fall, then go ahead and crimp it, right? Um, crimp it, lay that whatever it is, maybe the sorghum, a bunch of your rye, maybe your oats, and you're going to lay all that stuff down and you're going to create more of that thatch layer. Um, then, then that would be the only reason I would crimp um, after your fall planting. I encourage you to do a test this year. Take, take this system, get it into play, take your disc and disc down the center of your food plot or along the edge of your food plot or whatever so you can tell. Seed that the way that you would conventionally seed it the way that I'm recommending doing and I it will shock you how much moisture is under this thatch layer with a blend that is never exposed to the dry elements, if you will, um, of drought and, and everything else, erosion. You can go two feet over and get in that disc spot and it's twice as hot. This is cool. This has got moisture. Your disc spots don't. So now some folks will, you know, kind of attest that to the to the grave with me and they'll battle it right to the no end. That I understand that. I'm not saying that you never have to till. I'm not saying that tilling is is the devil. I'm just saying that we need to till less and, and try a system like this, guys. Um... I'm, I, I'll have a disc for my putting in my screening. Um, I'll have a disc for just in case I need to set my thatch layer, layer back um, every now and then, every third year, something like that. Um, but I don't disc twice or three times a year. So hope this one makes sense, guys. And uh, that is the kind of the planting instructions, if you will. Only crimping in the, in the after you plant your summer blends. Try not to crimp. Um over your fall blends after you plant that fall blend in going into August or October through October. So crimping in the summer, not crimping in the fall. That's why rye is so important guys. That's why we use it. That's the theory behind it. That's why we're talking about it right now. So this fall, when you start planting, maybe you haven't planted your summer blends yet, yet. you still have time. I usually don't plant till June, but I'm gonna be on the road a lot with client trips in June. And got a lot of things going on with the family in June, so I, um, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I plant, elected to plant middle of May. Um, so take that one to heart, guys. Um, start planning and looking towards the fall on what you're going to do with your food plots this fall. And I highly, highly, highly recommend that it's got something to do, if not the only thing you do, with cereal rye. Thanks, guys.